righteousness. He is my peace and stress. He is my daily bread. Indeed, I'm truly blessed. He is my. He is my peace and stress. He is my daily bread. Indeed, he is my righteousness. Peace and stress. Daily bread. He is the strongest. He is the strongest, greatest power there ever was. He is the strongest, greatest power there will ever be. He is the strongest, greatest power there ever be. Oh, can sickness or famine rise before him? Nothing, nothing can stand against you. Can hatred or disease arise before him? Nothing can stand against you.
consistent part of your journey? Or does it sit and collect dust? Do you apply it to your whole life? Or just listen to the parts that are convenient for you? Does it matter to you? Truly? Deeply? Matter? The Bible is God's word to His people. It's the blueprint by which we walk this life. It's comfort in times of need and clarity in times of confusion. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's wisdom when there's confusion and certainty when there's doubt. It's living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The Bible. Do you read it? Come on, open up your mouth and put your hands together and bless the Lord. A little bit better than that if you can. Hallelujah. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. We honor God for his faithfulness towards us. Uh, he's a great God and he's worthy of great praise. Uh, good to see all of you God's people uh, here this morning. God's been good to us. Um, I said God's been good to us. Um, if you don't believe me, lean over and ask your neighbor, has God been good to you? I promise you God's been good to us. Uh, when I was leaving the um, early service this morning in Columbia, uh, while leaving that service, one of the elders or deacons uh, came to me and said to me, Bishop G, I need your prayers because uh, my neighbors are trying to figure out how to trust God again with all of the things that have happened in their family. Um, And as she described the situation, um, and she gave a name, I was familiar actually with the family that she named. Um, And as soon as she said it, I said, yes, I know of the older son who passed away. And I heard this week about the brother of the older son who passed away, the younger brother passed away. 
less than a year later. And um, her, her articulation was the family said, how can anybody believe that God is really existing uh, when he would take uh, my sons from me? And um, that becomes a very difficult and challenging thing to say uh, or to live through. You know, y'all with me? Y'all y'all all right? It becomes a very challenging thing. Uh, but we trust in the Lord. Y'all, 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 we trust in the Lord. And there comes a time, watch this, this is, this is going to be a very hard saying, but let me give you a hard saying. There comes a time when you can't lean into your own understanding. Y'all not help me talk to you. It's times when you can't lean in your own understanding. And there comes a time when words just don't work. Unless it's his word. And by his word, I don't even mean what you quote. I mean him present. I need him to be present with me in those moments. Y'all, am I making sense to anybody? Um, and so uh, I want to encourage you to pray for one another. Uh, that we don't just use eloquent speech. But we uh, encourage people to pursue the presence of God uh, for in his presence. Y'all help me now. There's the fullness of joy and at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And so when you can't find him, you go search for him. And he said, if you seek me, y'all not help me. Good God. All right. And if you knock, the door is open and you ask, you shall receive. I know I didn't do it in order, but it's all right. You'll be okay. Amen. Uh, so we thank God for all of you, God's people. We're going to get into our communion services after the word this morning. Um, I solicit your prayers this morning. I don't know what's going on. My body just got extremely fatigued today, a little bit more than normal. Um, but the Lord is our strength. The Lord is our strength. I actually got here to the service early and went in the office and took a nap. A nap. I heard worship going on. I said, oh, my God, I got to get up. I said, I mean, that's how worship woke me up. I took a nap in between services. So um, I don't know what was, was actually going on, um, but but um, but God is able. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, to the gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, John 20. Um, hallelujah. So. The good news this morning is that Jesus lives. Y'all, let me see. Uh, Y'all, I couldn't long see. Uh, Jesus lives. Um, if you have your Bible, we're going to St. John chapter 20. There we shall peruse verse 19 through 23. Um, again, it's good to see all of you. Uh, we do have some missing parts of the body. I'm going to challenge you this week. Reach out to some of those who are missing and just tell them, say, we've been missing you in service. Is that all right? Just let them know. So we've been missing you in service. We would love to see you there um, as you add to us. This is um, John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 19 through 20, read, 23. And it reads as such. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, uh, midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad. Then they saw the Lord. When they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Amen. I want to 
just for a little moment preach to us. I, I said it's going to be the shortest message. And I got the same doubt at Columbia as I got today. God bless you all. Um, I want to talk to us for a brief moment that God is still speaking. Look at your neighbor and say, God is still speaking. God is still speaking. Um, as we've gone through, even last Sunday up to, to this point today, we have made a point of that which is the difference between the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of God. Mm -hmm. But the Lord has challenged us as a congregation not to only be... Uh, not to only admire the resurrection of God, but and not only to be given to the ascension of God, but to know that God is up to something when you're in between. And I ain't get no help. Uh, tell your neighbor, say, God is up to something even when we're in between. And I believe that we are in a place where there are a lot of believers who are between some things. Um, in between the last manifestation and the next promise. And sometimes I don't know how not to be overwhelmed, watch this, with my history. When God has given me such a future. Um, but you can't always be so future-minded that you don't understand God is doing something right now. Good Lord, good Lord. Uh, somebody just come on, preach with me for a moment and tell your neighbor, God is doing something right now. Right? Uh, don't allow where you, what you have come out of and neither where you're going to, to do, have so much power over you that you miss the now of God. And the now of God has some things that it's preparing you for and setting you up for a future that you thought you would have but not sure how you would get there. What do you do when the last thing God did in your life, watch this, excuse me, caused you to be frightened? Uh, because the truth of the matter is, is that right prior to this in-between stage is I needed to know what God was up to because he left us. And he left us in a way that not only was it part of the process, but I felt abandoned by the plan of God. I'm preaching good and y'all don't even know it. And how do you handle it when God has God's process for your life causes your heart to feel like something's missing, something's lacking, something ought to be added to this. And the truth be known, though we don't preach about these 40 days between the resurrection and the ascension of God, is that there's something God's got to do because I am in a place called troubled did you hear what I said? I said, what's the place called? It's called what? Troubled. And the Bible would then again, of course, y'all know uh, John 14, the scripture that we often quote during home going service. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. For in my father's house, y'all help me preach now. There are many men. If it were not so, I wouldn't even have told you. So you need to know that everything I've told you, Good God, I feel like preaching. Everything I've told you is absolutely coming to pass. Come on, somebody preach with me this morning and tell your neighbors, everything God told you is, no, you got to say it like I said it. Put the emphasis on it. Everything God has told you is coming to pass. I, I know you've been troubled. I know you've been wearied. I know you were even disappointed. But I need you to know that every promise, everything he said, everything he declared in your life, I'm telling you, it is coming to pass. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Uh, but don't, 
don't, don't, don't sit back and refute, watch this, your process. Mm. It's amazing to me that God inserts these 40 days and we understand we have been in church long enough and maybe you haven't been, I don't know, some, maybe some of us have been in church long enough to know the importance of 40 days. It is 40 years that we have in the wilderness. It is uh, 40 days that Jesus is in the wilderness. Y'all with me? It is 40 days that Elijah is being prepared. Are y'all with me at all? and here it is there is 40 days after his resurrection before his ascension so what are we doing in this 40 I'm here to let you know that this is a time of preparation y'all good God that God is preparing you for your next good God almighty Lord have mercy Jesus somebody preach with me and declare God is preparing us for our next The scriptures that we've read today, of course, Jesus makes an appearance and a, he shows up in rooms that people didn't think he was going to come back to. All right, all right. One of the things that amazes me in the text, if you don't mind me jumping around just a little bit, uh, I just read that one uh, particular pericope for, for you, but I really wanted to read all of John 20 and 21 to you. Um, but two chapters reading to you on one Sunday might be a little much for you to handle. Um, but the thing that one of the things that also gets me in this is in chapter 21 is we find Peter, Jesus is making an appearance to Peter. And when he's making his appearance to Peter is that uh, Peter is doing what Peter has always done. If you go back when Jesus is initially finding his disciples, he goes and he finds Peter who is actually fishing. Are y'all with me? And he begins to promise Peter and the sons of Zebedee that I will make you, help me y'all, fishers of men, right? And then he causes him, he promises him that I'm going to transition you from being a fisher of fish to being a fisher of men. And when Jesus now comes to the place after his resurrection, what does he find Jesus, what does he find Peter doing? He finds Peter doing what Peter was used to doing before. Before Peter met Jesus it's amazing what can happen when you're disappointed how you can revert back to what was initially comfortable it's amazing how Jesus can find you not walking in the power nor the authority that you had when he was right there with you but all of a sudden now your heartache causes you to retreat and now you're doing what you always did and still getting the results you always got why because Peter is fishing and while he's fishing at the time now that Jesus is post resurrection when Jesus finds him fishing he finds him catching nothing you've learned nothing y'all not help me from the whole time I was with you when in chapter when in Luke's gospel I told you what to do y'all not help me in order to catch more than you've ever seen before don't you remember when you had to tell your brothers to come along and bring their boats too because yours were starting to sink but now you're back to doing things the way you've always do it but I know that there's some believers this morning who says in the midst of my process I am refusing to revert backwards into the place that I do the things that I've always done. God, if you find me in this season, you're going to find me holding on to the things you said about me, holding on to the lessons you taught me, holding on to what you declared about me. I will not go back. Somebody preach it with me and declare I will will not go back hallelujah uh, he finds him there and here's the thing I love about Jesus Jesus is so smooth man he's so smooth I'm sorry I, I, forgive me if that's blasphemous for you but Jesus is so smooth that not only does he tell him how to get the 153 different kinds of fish that this time won't break his neck his net but he also says to him he says you know what 
I already got a coal of fire set up. We can go have our fish fry over here on the beach. And, uh, and they go on, and he, they say, and when Peter begins to realize who it is, he jumps in the water, swims over to him, says, man, this is my God. And, 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 and those of you, Uncle Leon, Uncle Leon, there's some of us who will remember now this next verse of scripture that Jesus says, because when I was a little boy, I used to go to church at St. James uh, Church, Hafei down in the eastern shore and they would sing a song come and dine the master's calling come and dine y'all not okay y'all don't uh, I know all I got is my family with this one Jesus fed the multitude turned the water into wine come and dine the master's calling come and dine and you see now in the text Jesus invites them to come and dine with him because he's already, oh, good God Almighty, got things started for you uh, with the last experience you just had. Let me maybe make it make sense for you. I'm trying to express to you that in the middle of your process, Jesus is about to get involved in your every day. Oh, I ain't getting, I ain't, Lord, I can't. I gotta preach it somewhere else. Maybe I got, maybe they, I don't know. Maybe there's a Methodist church I can go preach this to. Hallelujah. But somebody just to speak back to me, say, I need Jesus involved in my everyday. I'm not looking for him just when I get to church. Don't need him on a Sunday. I'm not trying to get Saturday night right to see what happens on Sunday morning. But if he can be involved in my every day of the week and in everything that I do, that's where I need him. All right. See, uh, he invites me to come to let me read, let me read, Darian, there's a problem in the text, according to those of us who read the Bible fast, but don't always fact check ourselves for understanding. It was on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was fully come and that we found then that people, as we talk about it, were full of the Holy Ghost. But the problem in the text suggests, Overseer Brown, that when Jesus met with the disciples in a closed room, the scripture says that in the midst of their process, he decided to breathe on them. Good Lord. Boy, I want to preach this part right now. In the middle of my in-between, he came to my hideout. Y'all could he came to the only place I felt protected and guarded. He invaded that place. And when he got there, he decided to breathe on me. Y'all could go. And when he breathed on me, he told me, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Y'all could go. I wasn't waiting for Pentecost. Pentecost came to me. Y'all not help me before the date. Y'all not help me before Pentecost. Pentecost wasn't even for me. It was for the 120. Y'all not help me. But for those of us who was close to him, he came to see about us where we were. Oh, y'all. Okay. All right. I'm, uh, y'all all right? Stop looking at me. Tony, it's so good to see you. It's, uh, yeah, y'all. I, I don't want to mess with your theology too much, but too many of us who've had relationship with him have been waiting for him to do something in an upper room. When he says, I've been waiting to do something with you in your secret place, in your in-between place. I was waiting to do something with you while you still had tears flowing down your eyes. I was waiting to do something with you while you were still doubting that I was still here. I was waiting to do something with you while you were afraid and in the middle of some things. God said, while you were in the middle of it, I was going to come see about you and I'm going to 
do something with you not tomorrow not next week but somebody say now is the time when God's going to do something with my life somebody say yes Lord alright hallelujah hallelujah alright glasses He's the God of the in-between. Y'all, y'all ain't quite with me yet. I need somebody prophet. Takira, do I need to hoop this the way we did the other night? Come on, somebody say, he's the God of the in-between. He's the God of the... God of the in-between. That's why I often, Elder Rudolph, the red nose, reindeer, green... That's why I often get thrown off when we begin to build our theology around him being the Alpha and the Omega only. As if he's only the God of my start and my finish. Y'all, it bothers me because it makes me feel alone when I'm in the middle. Y'all not help me. But the truth be known, somebody's with me right now. The truth be known is that I found him even in the middle. Y'all not help me. Hallelujah. I found him to be in the middle of my process. I found and if I could find him there, I wouldn't have been able to make it. My ending is proof that he was with me in the middle the entire time. All right. Okay. Let me, um, I'm getting, this is already getting too long. I'm getting longer. I was almost finished by this time this morning, so I'm going to finish this message. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. I love it. What happens, I want to, I want to, what I want to do is I want to awaken your senses. Part of the intent of this message is to awaken your senses. When I tell you God is still speaking, I need to awaken your senses beyond your challenges. Uh, we were celebrating uh, yesterday. Um, uh, uh, How did you know? You know, you know everything before me. You just something else. We were celebrating uh, Pat's seven. You probably did because I wasn't there when she was born. I wasn't there at 75 years. We were celebrating Pat's, uh, my Aunt Pat's birthday yesterday. She turned 75. And uh, while celebrating her birthday, uh, there were some things that I had missed out on. And so, so Tanya was trying to tell me on the things that I had missed. And while she was telling me, I was, I was ironing William's clothes. And I was trying to make sure, did you brush your teeth? You brush your teeth. Go ahead, brush your teeth. I was trying to make sure, did you this, did you that, the other. And in the midst of all of doing some other things, I did not hear the other stuff she was saying. So I had to come back and I had to say, excuse me, husbands, I, my apologies to all the husbands. I had to come back in the room and I had to say, so what did you say? And so she had to go back and she had to re uh, give a new account uh, for what she was actually saying. Because watch this, I was so into what I was doing, I could not hear. I'm trying to preach, I'm trying to preach, I'm trying to preach. And that, and that I believe that what God is saying for the church is don't get so involved and so busy about the things that you are doing that you stop missing my voice uh, because some of you been waiting for wind and you some of you been waiting for the earth to quake and some of you been waiting for fire y'all I'm come on y'all I'm you know where I am in the text and he says but you got to understand that I have a still small voice and I'm not waiting for somebody uh, who's gonna wait for me to shake the world in order to know I'm speaking I want somebody to be so attuned to me and so in alignment with me uh, that when I whisper uh, they say God I heard that when I begin to utter something they know in fact I want you to know the thoughts that I have towards you I want you to be so in tune with me that if I don't say it but it's a thought of God that you become aligned with the thoughts of God somebody say thank you Lord mm. okay. so I'm trying to uh 
I'm trying to get us to a place of a different sensitivity that God is still speaking. Sometimes, if you don't understand this, sometimes the still small voice of God comes out of the mouth of a five-year-old who might just say, Jesus. <laughs> sometimes it comes out of a co-worker who brings up a subject that you've been praying about all week long. That's the still small voice. Y'all to help me. Sometimes the still small voice is when the preacher begins to preach. But you say, I've been praying about that thing all week long. Sometimes it's when you read the text and somebody else says, I read the same thing last week. That's the still small voice. I don't always need God to speak loudly and audible to me because I'm aligned and my sensitivity because he breathes on me. I can sense where he is and what he's saying and what he's up to. All right. Okay, calm down. Yeah. So increasing our sensitivity towards him, one of the things we got to realize, let me uh, give a little bit of approach to this, is that we must realize that what Jesus wants to do, watch this, when you get out of the hardest season you thought you've ever been in, the first thing he wants to do is meet with you. Y'all, y'all, good God. I'm telling you, God wants to meet with you. It is in the text, this is the hardest season for the disciples that they've ever been in in their life. They have never been in a place where they had, after knowing him, they didn't have, they couldn't be with him. So they're in the midst of this hard and difficult season in life. And he says, I know you're troubled, but don't worry, I'm calling a meeting today. Y'all, oh God, I'm, I don't know why I'm the only person extremely happy. Have you ever, while you work in corporate America, I promise you, if there's something that happens at your job that causes numbers to go down and things out of whack and things are going awry, the first thing they're going to do is you're going to find out that those who are in charge are going to say, we need a meeting. Y'all could God about it. And I'm telling you, God is saying the same thing to you. I know where you were. I know you're in between. I know you've been disappointed, hurt, upset, and all of those other things. But don't worry, I'm calling a meeting. And when we have this meeting, it's going to be a Jesus meeting. Good God Almighty, which means I'm going to tell you what the outcome's going to be. I'm going to set the goals. I'm going to line up the objectives. We're going to put together a strategy. And we're going to make sure that everything we thought should happen will happen after this meeting. All right. Okay. All right. Let me, let me uh, Carolyn, girl, you're making me preach now. And, uh, and so, so he has a meeting with them, and I, and uh, and I, I, you know, I get excited because I get excited because of Thomas. I know people. I, I know how y'all get on Thomas. I know. I, traditionally, the church smashes Thomas. Like yo, he just so doubting. The other people didn't have a chance to doubt. He walked in the room because his next point is he walks in the room automatically showing his scars. Uh, okay, let me, let me express to you that one of the things that have to be a part of your process. Oh, y'all not listening to me. Paul, one of the things that's part of your process is not only saying that you got through it, but it's showing the scars that he got you through it. Oh, Lord. It ain't enough that you said you came out. Somebody's got to see that you were actually in it at some point. I don't believe you. Re he really brought you out of what you in. No, I was depressed. How am I supposed to know you were depressed? Let me show you my scars. I got 
pillows with tear stains on it. Let me show you my scars. Let me show you the time I was ready to give up. I got scars to prove that not only was I there, but my scars gonna prove to you that he got me out. Oh God. All right, okay. Greg, I'm trying to preach as best I can, man. I'm trying, I'm trying to preach. So, uh, all right, sit down, sit down, sit down. So he, so I must, I must be willing to show scars. And Thomas says, I'm not going to believe it till I see it. This is what I love about God is he doesn't just say, you know, you would have been more blessed because he does utter that you would have been more blessed having not having to believe without seeing right that's scripture but it doesn't stop him from showing it anyway which means God is willing to give you what you need even if he didn't think it was necessary you are ain't nobody preaching with me I preach it. somebody say even if it was unnecessary he decided to give it to me anyway good God. All right. Okay. I'm talking about this place in between. All right. So he meets with them. He shows them scars. So he's a God who says, I'm going to meet and I'm going to prove. Y'all, good Lord, have mercy. I'm going to prove to you whatever you need so that your faith returns back. This is between the resurrection and the ascension. The other thing he does in the midst of that is he teaches them all oh, to be a fly on the wall. Yes, yes. What is it that you can teach me when I felt like I lost everything? And then you tell me you got to go away again. I, I, I wonder what lessons in 40 days while we sat eating fish sandwiches on the beach, what is it that you were really talking to me about? What was it you were talking about when you entered into the room and you just showed up all of a sudden and the doors were shut? How, what is it that you decided to teach us in the room? And I, and I don't know all of the lessons and I, I could use my imagination and begin to get some things, but this is the one thing I know for sure is whatever he taught, y'all not help me, was enough for me to know that I could make it once he leaves again. Whatever he taught me, it must have been enough for me to walk in a new strength. Enough for me to have a brand new faith. Enough for me to have a new, new vigor in my life. To move on. Enough for me to realize that if I got to be a martyr for this, I don't care what somebody else is going to do. Because he taught me and he showed me enough in this in-between place that whatever was coming against me, guess what? I can handle it. Why? Because he taught me some things. Good God Almighty, I wish I had somebody in this sanctuary who would say, thank you, Lord, that even in my in-between place, you decided to teach me some things. You decided to show me some things. And I didn't have it all together. I didn't understand everything there was. But you taught me anyway. All right. Okay. All right. My apologies, Carolyn. I, I just need to apologize. I'm the worst hooping preacher in all cre I'm not a hooping preacher. That's what it is. Oh, grace, but. The purpose then, what's the reason, God? If, if, like if you were going to die, be buried, be resurrected and ascend what are these 40 days about why not just do what you had to do why not just ascend why put all this space in here because the space was for you 
Y'all. <laughs> y'all. I had to make sure in the middle. Of, what a kind God, y'all. I had to make sure in the middle of everything that I hit pause and I gave you your 40 days so that you could manage whatever would be next for your life. Because the promise that I gave you was not only that I would never leave you, but the rest of that promise is that I wouldn't forsake you. And sometimes we get happy just that he doesn't leave us. And I'm grateful for it as well. But just as much as I'm glad he never leaves, I'm just as happy that he never forsakes. <laughs> that I'm going to make sure in the middle of whatever you're going through that you get the objective accomplished, the lesson learned, y'all not help me, the power necessary, the faith that is critical so that you could be everything I need you to be to know that no weapon formed against you will have the ability to prosper, to know that you can speak a thing and it be a Establish, uh, to know that I've made you to be uh, more than a conqueror uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord uh, to know that I made you the head uh, and not the tail uh, above uh, and not beneath uh, to know that I've done these things for you uh, and I don't need you to forget about them so I'm making space for you make space for you all right okay yeah. The last is 40 days, then are critical for us. Watch this, but their preparation for transition. Y'all, come on, say with me. It's preparation for transition. Because I'm going to speak some things to you. And I'm going to move you out of what you've been comfortable with. But in order for you to now, for you to begin to prophesy and they not be just false words or sounding brass and tinkling cymbals, I had to give you something in the last 40 days. I had to put something in your heart. Y'all not help me. I had to make sure you realize this wasn't about you, but it was about God. Y'all could have I had to make sure that you weren't caught up in what people think about you or how you think about others. I had to make sure I, I had to take some things out of your programming and had to remove some things about from you that you were used to and begin to put in place the things that I think. Good God. For I know, I know, I know, I know, I know the thoughts that I have for you. Good God Almighty, I know. And so there's some things that I have been thinking about towards you. And I don't want your own thoughts interfering with my thoughts. Not just about you, but I've got thoughts about those who you've been with. Good God Almighty. And I don't want your opinion interrupting my opinion about them. So I set you up for a time of preparation. So that when you look at a soul, you wouldn't just judge the soul harshly. But you would look at them and see God. God in them. That you would look at them and begin to pray for them. You would look at them and see them how I see them. And pray for them the way I would pray for them. That you would not judge people so harshly and be so critical and criticize. That you wouldn't condemn everybody to hell. But instead you prophesy life. That you would realize that I'm the giver and the sustainer of life. And that you would realize the power of my love. And you would begin to speak in love and speak in power and when you see somebody fall instead of casting them down to hell you stretch forth your hand and you tell them lift up your head oh ye gates be lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory oh. hallelujah hallelujah you needed this it's a time of Preparation and transition. Uh, Terry, help me finish, please. It's a time of preparation and transition. I've been using 
this time. And y'all, hope, I hope you know we celebrate the resurrection, of course, last Sunday. We are seven days out. You've got 33 days. You got 33 days of him showing up in your life, preparing you for your next. Hear God in the midst of it. Let him talk. Let him speak. Let him declare what is ahead of you. But embrace where you are. I, I, I know this sounds, sounds, this may say, sound strange for us, but we don't always, as prophetic people, we don't always do a good job overseer. Curtis M. Brown, we don't always do a good job of embracing the reality of where we are. Y'all, y'all. Oh God, I'm gonna use the term. It's a it, this term is a it's a, a Buddhist term actually that has normally been coined as, but we're great at spiritual bypass. Oh God. Did you hear what I said? I said we're great at spiritual bypass, which means we go through something and then we say, Oh Jesus fixed it all. And inside your heart is weeping. Y'all could uh, you crying, you disappointed, you won't even tell nobody you really upset with God. Y'all could uh, cuz you because you rather go through this spiritual bypass instead. You are acting as if uh, like when you go down York Road, there's a there's one road that they call the Towson bypass where you can not go through downtown Towson. You make a left turn and go through Bosley. And we're trying to go through Bosley, watch this, and we don't realize you're about to miss the benefit of what's been built up. Okay, listen to me, listen to me. You're about to miss the benefit of what God really has for you if you spiritually bypass. You got to go through it. Oh, this is, yo, I know, I know this is a hard, but can I give you truth? Even if I don't give you excitement is you got to go through it. If I don't go through this, I won't learn the lesson. And it's, and it's natural, y'all. It's natural to say, God, where's the easy way? Where's the shortcut? How do I get around this? But this is your time of preparation. You don't get to go around. You got to stay in it. You got to hear me in it. And you got to go through it. When the, uh, Sean, when the, when the sister who was a deacon this morning talked to me this morning about the family who had lost two sons, I told her, I said, the only thing you can do right now is be present. Thank you for joining us for worship today. If you'd like to sow a seed, you can do so using any of the giving options below. We want to connect with you. If you'd like to receive salvation, if you have a prayer request, or you'd like more information on Kingdom Worship Center, please do so using the link below. Have a great week.